Today we're going to talk about drop-down lists. Let's open up our template and let's start by adding our header and footer. So drop-down lists are one of the most versatile objects found in the object library. They just have a lot of practical applications that uh, are conducive to dynamic forms. So we're going to drag in a, a drop-down list out here and we're going to call this drop-down list drop-down list one, that's fine. And we're going to name the caption choose a name. So the caption is what's at the left here and of course like any other field you can change in the layout where the caption is. It can be a top caption, a bottom caption, or left and right. We're going to leave it at the left. Choose a name. and Then we're going to size this accordingly. Also we have options like the appearance. I'm going to make it a none appearance so it doesn't look like a sunken box. And we have a couple options down here of list items. And so I'm going to put some names in here. All right, I have four options now. Uh, three names and then boys. And then there's this check field called allowed custom text entry. And what this does is if it's checked, it allows the end user as they're filling out the form to add something else to the list. In the example we're going to do today, that won't that won't be necessary, so I'm going to leave that off. And then the second thing is commit on select or exit. And what that's talking about is when do we as a programmer want the selection to be committed to by lifecycle. In other words, do we want it when they actually choose the item from the drop down or do we want it when they exit the field and go to another field? And for the most part, all the time I use select. Exit is just not what people intuitively think when they're using a drop down. And then it has a presence and we're going to leave it visible. All right, now we're going to drag a couple of image objects onto the form and we're going to name them IMG 1, 2, 3, and 4. I'm going to put them right on top of each other and I'll explain why in a minute. All right, so we have four image fields and I'm going to call them image 1, 2, 3, and 4. And right now they're empty. They don't have any uh, image associated with them. And so let's go ahead and do that. Let's click on the image field and associate an image. So the first one I'm going to associate is with this picture of my son Luke. Second one I'm going to associate with this picture of my son Sam. Third one obviously DJ. And then the last one all, a picture of all three of the boys. Now just in case anybody's wondering or worried out there these are my sons. This is actually my kids and this is about 15 years ago so these these kids are all adults now and I'm not uh, doing anything untoward with respect to them. And to notice just for sake of um, discussion there's this field underneath on image there's this checkbox embed image data and that just embeds the actual picture into the XML of the form and it's usually good to do this because if you were to open this form on another computer and try to edit it in the life cycle and you hadn't embedded then those pictures would not be linked and that would cause an issue so, uh, but one caveat is if you embed the image it does make your life cycle form file the resultant PDF large because you're embedding these pictures in there so however large, the, large these pictures are the file size is going to be the, the, at least the file size of your PDF at the end Okay, so now let's um, let's do some scripting. So we want to script this drop-down to make the picture that is associated with the name appear when we choose that name. So in order to do that, we need to go to the binding tab first and make sure that specify item values is turned on, and that the items makes the, the values of the items make sense. So one, two, three, four, and that does make sense top to bottom. We could move these around, we could change these, we could make them 100, 200, 300, 400, but for this sake that wouldn't make any sense. 1, 2, 3, 4 is fine. All right, so we have specify item values turned on and by default it is not turned on. And then we're going to go up here to the drop down list script editor and we're going to choose the exit event. For drop down list, lists, that's usually the most 
intuitive way to script on the exit. You don't want to script on click because just clicking the, the little drop down arrow would be firing that event. We want the actual choosing, the selecting of an option to be what fires the event. And then we're going to type a script out here. If this dot raw value equals equals one, something happens. Now I haven't explained this in the past, but equals equals is just JavaScript syntax for test to see if it is equal to one. If we just put one equal sign there, uh, that would be a, introducing a bug into our script. What that is saying is make this dot raw value equal to one. In, in, in other words, set the value of the raw value to one. And we don't want to do that. We want to test the, the value of raw value. All right, and then we're going to go image one dot presence equals visible. And so what this is saying is if option one is chosen on the exit, make image one, the image of our, my son Luke, visible. Now in order to make that effect happen, we need to go ahead and hide all the images. So I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to go to the presence value and turn it to hidden. So now they're gone. They're still there. Obviously they're still in our hierarchy, but they're not visible anymore. And then I'm going to continue on with my script and say else if this dot raw value equals equals two, and hopefully you can predict what I'm going to put here, image two dot presence equals visible, and so on. Now, of course, there is a simpler way to write this script. It's uh, redundant to write it this long, but for this example, I want everybody to just understand what's happening and keep it simple. And so what we're saying is, depending on what the value of this dot raw value is, make that image appear, because right now they're hidden. So now let's test and see if that actually works. All right, so we choose an option, and we see the picture. But I think there probably is a problem. Once we've gone all the way through in order, we go back to the first picture, we don't see it. And that's a problem with our code I failed to mention. So when you drag items onto your design layout, you are layering them if you put them over top of each other. And there is a tool called Bring to Front, Send to Back that tells you which is on top of the other, layer by layer. And so if I went to the image of um, image one, the image of Luke, you can't see it right now even though it's visible unless I send it to the front. And once I do that, He's at the front. And so I need to put this in my code. I, I don't want to have to worry about changing bring to back, bring to front programmatically in my form. I want to do this with code. And so the way I do this is I come back to my drop down and I have to add some complexity to this code. So for every if statement, I've got to add every image, presence, and set the other ones to hidden. So by adding all these lines of code, I'm basically telling it each time a choice is made, show one picture but hide all the others. And so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy and paste it into each section. And then I'm going to go and make sure that I actually have every picture covered. So for instance, i got to change that to a 1. I change that to a 1 and that to a 1. And now each time a choice is made, one picture is being made visible, but the other three are being hidden. And that makes for a better effect. So let's save and preview that now. First, before we preview it, we got to remember to hide all the pictures. So we'll save it again. And now we'll preview it. Okay, let's choose boys first. 
there they are and Sam and Luke and no matter what we choose now and what order we choose the picture swaps correctly and so that's one of the ways programmatically you can make drop-down lists affect other objects or other form fields and there are there's a there's a again just like radio buttons and check boxes there's a lot of different things you can do with this but drop downs seem to be a little bit more versatile because you have a lot of control over the options the list items as long as you don't allow custom text entry you can control how things go in there okay so that's all we're going to do for intermediate lifecycle 201 on drop downs maybe in a 301 or a 401 class we can get really advanced with this stuff so please subscribe, please go to the blog truetechtroubleshooting.com to ask questions or to get specific help for your forms. And remember that IT problems are usually simple, but they're never easy. We'll see you next time.